another workshop. It is a workshop about the treatment of the defect of the femur, really the tibia defect. And now with a, a similar frame, we should do treatment of defect of the femur. You see this big defect here. It's practically uh, 10 centimeters, quite 9 centimeters of defect. Not easy case, and uh, we should do it. Good job. Well, like I explained to you, to the tibia, it's difficult uh, to, to say that in, in each case is standard to treatment. There is different cases, different approach of treatment, and uh, when we do defect of the femur, we try it in the beginning to put the st to start the put frame in the way when I do surgery of uh, resection or uh, resection cleaning of the osteomyelitis or bone defect or uh, pseudoarthrosis, I have a, a frame, initial part of the frame, build it on the, the femur in the way I may manipulate the bone better than if everything will be free. For this reason, what we do, we start of applying the proximal system to the femur and after that we do job to the distal part of the femur. What we do now, okay, I have prepared this system yeah, uh, and uh, I start job with the half pin put the half pin on the mid shaft on the diaphysis of the femur. Okay. What I do? I do I look at an fluoroscopy like I explained you before and we should put this half pin uh, perpendicular to the diaphysis of the femur in this way you may be oriented of the position of this fragment. Okay. And this is half pin, we fix it like this. After that it's not easy to understand how to position this because we need to calculate soft tissue, swelling, and uh, how the patients stay. But uh, I think we, we start doing like this. We put this half pin here. We attach it to the ring. And it's uh, maybe medium with the, medium. With the nut. Medium with the nut. For the sin of ring. Okay, keep this. Okay, we position this. One second. This is quite lateral. Okay, we put this half pin oriented to the, the X-ray, and now we fix it. Obviously, at the anterior part it's a little bit near of the skin, and posterior, big volume of the, of the muscle. Posteriorly, we should leave more space posteriorly. Okay, this way. Okay. And this way we put position of this half pin perpendicular to the diaphysis of the femur. Now we want to build this system of proximal system because after that we should do osteotomy of the femur, this uh, mid shaft of the diaphysis, for doing transport, for lengthening of the femur. And what I do? I always thinking about the deviation, probable de deviation that may be done during lengthening. 
and what they do, because I know, and unfortunately for us, that uh, during lengthening of the femur, uh, we frequently have a deviation in virus, the proximal femur when we do lengthening, and going in the virus because uh, adductor muscles are much more powerful and they create deviation in virus. To prevent this, we put this uh, system uh, with the hinges. In this case, I uh, we should build the biplanar hinges because I want to do the first thing, control the virus deformity. Another thing, control the procurvatum deformity during lengthening. What I do, I put these hinges a little bit higher because it should be done at the level of osteotomy. One. Another one I put posteriorly. Holes, male. Two holes. Yes, I put. Yes. Now we. Uh, this is a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, they should look one to another. Okay, like this. After that. I know that my uh, proximal ring, we have much more muscles here. This ring should be displaced just a little bit lateral. And I, I create this a little bit displacement by putting, by playing the hinges. What I do, I put another, another male like this. Okay, after that, I change this position later. What I do, I put this, I respect the same holes. Uh, this is uh, three holes here. I put in the same hole here, I touch like this. I put it near because we need to do lengthening. We may do like this, but um, maybe it's not so comfortable for the patient. And uh, posteriorly, I do it differently. I do another one here, posterior, bolt and nut here. Mm. Better one second, may do it differently. Yeah, downstairs, hello. The, uh, the road more posterior because it will be um, so bulky and comfortable for the patient. And what I do here, I do post proximal. And uh, I put the road here. In the same hole. I 
connect them with the mail. This way we um, displace it, proximal uh, ring, more lateral. And we create by planar hinges for correction of deformity that should be during lengthening. Okay, like this. Always overlapping these hinges because they should move simultaneously in the same plane. Later, maybe do another one. No. I do it just a little bit inclination. Maybe done parallel, but I know that it will be a virus deformity when we do lengthening. For correction of this, we may do more, uh, maybe at the end we do compression from this side. I put it like this. Now, other half pin. Okay. This. We need uh, to have a big space here between the osteotomy and the proximal half pin because the soft tissue is not so big for lengthening because defect is so 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 big defect nine centimeters here This way you may realign better perpendicular again to the axis and uh, you should see in the lateral view that the ring is perpendicular to the axis of the femur. Just in the beginning you realign it and you see it in fluoroscopy. Okay, it's a little bit heavy. After that, we, like I explained you, this uh, fragment, proximal fragment, should be really stable during lengthening. And what we may do here, we, we like I explained before, we may use uh, some kind of arch. We don't have this arch now, we have a, maybe the, we have a, this system for inclination. Or we may put uh, tela placa curva. Uh, placa curva. Mm -hmm. Or uh, in any case, there is a space of your fantasy for connection. 
for example, may, I may do like this here. I take a post. Mm. Okay, another one. Big fantasy here. Now I want to create something for for uh, touching the cube here. Mm -hmm. mm, that is it. We do with the roads. It's better. Okay. Another road, the same length, 100, this. And I put the plate here, and the way it, I extended my, my half ring, because it's proximal part, like I said before, I don't put the half wire, because in the Korgan, traditionally they use only wire, and I use only wire, but now we use half pin in the proximal femur. And what I do, I do like this. Okay, it's parallel like this. Not again. I create this extension. Okay, now we make put the cube because better to stabilize it. And then they should arrive quite in a trochanteric area because the proximal part larger and more it will be more stable. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. And go here. Here we use a safe drill in half pin and in looking in fluoroscopy. Like this. Like this. People are not sure. Right angle, do you have? Hmm? Ah, right angle. So give me, please. Okay, you see it's much more stable now. This system is um, 
Very comfortable for the patient because the gluteus muscles will be free. He may sit. If not, the arms will be too high. Okay, now we stabilize it. What we should do again? Now we build another system for for more stability. I put another road here anteriorly, whereas I have much more space here. I put it like a posterior post here. Okay. I put my rod. Okay, another mail, connect them, that is, again the pipeliner hinges and the system for lengthening. Operation table a little bit too low. <laughs> it's creating the low back pain. <laughs> yes. I need a little bit table a little bit higher. Okay. And what I do for this, I do I take this chair and I put sitting and this way I works much comfortable. Okay. Okay, now we put this third rod and uh, later we put force because like I said before, better stability we always have a four, four rods for connection. Now we stabilize it, obviously we should continue it um, uh, because there is not enough stability now. I put uh, usually three or, or four half pin on the proximal part, maybe for doing example, we put this oblique support like this, because it's create three-dimensional fixation. Maybe the five millimeters, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Five millimeters. Okay, we use this. I hope you see it. Yeah. A little bit more. Yes, yeah, the half pin goes from posterior. Because we should repeat the curvatum of the neck, like this, it's okay. Here we may do inclination how we want to create more stability. Like this. Okay. I fixed here. perché se no non mi entra sì, mm -hmm. ah, qualche... questo qua abbastanza corto aspetta molto bene 
Okay. This should do that. Small one. Okay, and this way we fixed half pin better. Okay, this is uh, inclination. It's not easy maybe to introduce this half pin, but it's create more stability because it's like a triangular st stabilization, you know, like a like an aircraft. It is fix it in this way. Yeah, this system have a special nut that it uh, auto block it. We fix it, and it's not never move. Okay, we fix it here, and we fix it here. And now it's much more stable again. Okay, the proximal system now really stable. Okay, we, later we we add maybe another half pin here, but for now we don't do this. We may do it later, or we 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 have this, and maybe another one we have, or some, yeah. yeah, because we need to put another one here, one or one or two. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I need to fix another. With a cube, yes. Cube, maybe one whole cube. You put this. Just give me this. One whole cube. And because it will be intermedial fragment, that is this. Should be fixed at minimum with two half pin. Okay, when you do put this half pin, you should create the, the, the reserve of the skin between this half pin and this half pin. Tension the, the skin in the way when you do lengthening, you have a reserve of the, of the skin. It's never enough, but try to do this always. Uh, put this tension of the skin before putting the half pin. Okay. Bolt. That's not good. Well, to use it, maybe just touch it. Okay. This is better. Okay, we fixed it. Okay, we fixed it better. Now I change this because I don't like this system. Why I don't like it? Because this road is too much anterior for the patient, will be uncomfortable. We do it the same way, all, all of this system. down and this way it's function good mm -hmm. same system we 
should keep it realigned. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Always like this. I'll adapt like a lens. Put always control the position because the, the hinges should be all, all of them in the same plane because if you do correction of virus they should work in the same same plane because if they incline it they will be blocked and then no correction achieve it. Okay, now much comfortable for the patient. Okay, and what we, we finished practically the proximal part. After that, this road I put it he, here only for orientation, but uh, like you imagine now, with this frame, I do the resection of the bone, I did do cleaning and everything here, I put a little bit long road, maybe if I, it give me the problem to do surgery, I remove it, after that I rebuild it. And I do approach, lateral approach, I do resection, cleaning of the infected bone, and I achieve this big defect. When I, this defect we have in the femur, we have only one bone, if you know. And uh, in this situation, we may uh, do shortening, acute shortening. The femur, you may do it more. Uh, but you should pay attention about the sciatic nerve because if you do it too much shortening or you do too much shortening for the arteries they do like this and there is a risk of uh, thrombosis or thrombosis vein thrombosis or some kind of lesion of artery for this reason I think you may do shortening but no more than uh, six seven centimeters it is uh, just dangerous to do seven centimeters I think but in any case, you do shorten it because it's more comfortable for you for the alignment. And the frame became more stable. Because what you do? You do a little bit shortening. If the defect is small, four or five centimeters, you do a good shortening. It just uh, dock inside working from the first day of the surgery. If you can't do too much shortening, you do partial shortening and uh, you recover lengthening in the future. What we do here uh, now, we have a plate here, we maintain the distance, we don't remove it, we mount in the, our ring here. This is uh, 180. Yes, 180. Big one, maybe this. Okay. In this case, we use the same ring. Maybe in the, your operation room, you have a different size of the rings. Probably this intermedial, the five of eight, should be a little bit bigger. This, this patient, this bone, don't have a muscles, we don't know how it is, but the real patient have a big amount of muscles and here you should put a little bit bigger in. In this tone maybe it will be a little bit shorter. Okay. Okay, we do the cleaning, we close the wood and we position the ring. What we do, we orient it again on the line of the condyle, like I explained to you before. If you uh, sure that you uh, achieve a good realignment, you may put straight road like I do now, because I don't have deformity. But uh, if you Okay, now we do like this. If you are not sure about the correction, you may build the same system distally with the hinges. Because uh, this defect here, because what may happen? You, you do correction, you do compression, but sometimes it goes in varus and valgus, and you may do these hinges. But Maybe easier in this case because the defect is, is bigger one. We do correct, well, slowly, slowly we do compression 
when we arrive in contact, you may change the roads, you put the shorter roads and they build the, this biplanar or monoplanar hinges to correct uh, deformity of the distal femur. We may do correction of varus, valgus, translation, or, and uh, in this way you achieve a good control of the docking site. Or another way, you arrive, arrive to the docking site, if you want to do another surgery, clean it, you may do another surgery, put it in compression immediately and solve the problem. Okay, we do another road, one, 200, yes, I put here. Uh -huh. They should be parallel. Just a little bit, uh, I touch it, the system here, I put this, okay, now we have space, more space, uh. Differently. Okay. Mm, you should stay parallel always, you know, you see the respect uh, to the row, to the holes. I put this in internal. And I should put internal here. And the same way here. If I put it in external line for their holes, I should maintain external line. Okay. Okay, you should center it, your ring on the distal part of the femur because if it is displaced or maybe not realigned good, you should adjust it with the uh, oblique rod or some plate because we have a different plate and we may adjust it. So, uh, like I said before, this ring may be a little bit smaller. If you have smaller ring, you add a different plate short, long, or something like this, in the way you connect proximal and distal ring with this plate, adjuster plate. And you compensate the diameter of one ring and another ring. Now we have the same size, we don't need the plate, but that's only for understanding I, sh I show you this. I put now the f another rod. Okay, now we have a three road, later we put another one posterior, but uh, for now it's not possible for the our system of fixation, okay? Practically, uh, we, we did this uh, temporary, and now we should fix distal femur. How we do this? We start with maybe with the wire. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, put any wire, a smooth wire, maybe. And like I said to you before, when we put in the wire on the on the disc of femur, we always should uh, control the knee flexion. Yeah, because uh, the displacement of soft tissue is completely different when the knee flexes it and when the knee extends it. This first wire, the, when you put it in this uh, position perpendicular of the distal femur, uh, if it is going in exactly in the uh, frontal plane, there is a less displacement of the soft tissue and there is less impeachment of the knee motion during the treatment. In any case, what you do? You do, you put the wire, maybe like this. And you control the knee motion. If you see that the knee motion is not good, what you may do? You may do like this. You put again the drill. Okay, all the skin tension here, you may flex the knee, this, flex the knee of the patient, and after that, introduce the wire again. If it is not uh, good from the lateral side, what you may do? You may cut the wire here, and do this, uh, cut obliquely, and do the same job here. You cut the wire, oblique. Attach here. Control the knee uh, like this. Go like this, the wire. You flex the knee, skin displacement, and you reintroduce the wire again like this. And this way you achieve good movement of the knee. Obviously, if this fragment is not stable, it's difficult to do this job, you try to do how it's possible. Okay. Now we attach the wire. Take, maybe you can, obviously, better to control the position of this wire in fluoroscopy because you see the level of the wire, you see where the bone is good, and you see realignment, like I explained to you before, that this uh, uh, joint line is inclined at seven degrees of the, respectively, of the anatomical axis of the femur. Mm -hmm. Okay, fix it. Good. Now we fix this. Mm -hmm. Tension the wire. in a classic way, in this way there is no displacement, nothing. Okay. Because this wire source should be centered good, realign it good. Okay. Here we do the classic way, cut. Bend. Okay. And um, after that, we should improve stability with a half pin. Okay. okay. You, we use this and this. Maybe lateral. Now we use a. Uh, Two hole post 
here, two cube. The, this half pin lateral should be done from posterior. Another row, small bolts maybe you have. Okay, half pin. One here. In the, the same uh, the same principle here, when you put uh, the half pin, there is you uh, go through the fascia, the uh, posterior part of the fascia. And what you do when you put the half pin? Fix it with a small bolt or medium bolt. Just more stable the system. Each time you do introduce one wire or one half pin, control the flexion of the knee. Because in this way now, you flex the knee, if the patient have difficulties, it's better to cut around this half pin a little bit, to cut the fascia and the way the patient moves the knee. Okay, after that we move to the medial part. Here we use a, a small bolt again. And uh, this half pin. Oh, maybe it's okay here. Yeah. Oh, here is okay. okay. Now we put this half pin. They will be uh, crossed one with another. Like this, from posterior part. Control and fluoroscopy, it should be not so long. Okay. And the same principle, when you put this half pin, flex the knee, do a little bit of uh, cutting of the skin and the muscle under the skin in the way that your knee will be flexed. Just in the beginning you should achieve good flexion. If we want it possible to put another wire in the distal part, but not so much crossing because one wire uh, it's maybe not enough in this case because the frame should stay for a long time and we should uh, maintain for long. Mm -hmm. Okay, take this, I don't do too much crossing, just a little bit, put here from b below, okay, look it for free holes, oops, uh -uh. We may put like this. Okay, I distance it again from the road and we will fix the wire with this male post. Like this or like this. I saw it was one with a hole. We don't have hole. 
Oh yes, with the hole because if it goes in center, I use the bolt with the hole. The same, like I said you before, you might do tension with the post, but we don't do it always. We do better here with the tensioner. Now we position it another post here. Is it always with the hole? No, 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 we don't need here the hole. We look for the free falls here. much comfortable here and I put washer maybe we have one wash okay like I said you never bend the, wa uh, the wire because if you see this wire don't touch the post you need to put the spacer washer and the way when you touch the bolt it's maintain original position Side of the fish. Okay. Try this. Try this. Classical way, cut, bend, okay, and now here we may do the tension. For a chief tension with the tensioner here, not so comfortable, we may use, this is posed side here. Keep the bottom cube like this. The tension of this wire should be not so big because uh, if the post don't resist a big tension. It will be, like I said before, maybe 80 kilos, not so much. But we put this wire oppositely because in this way they, they, uh, fix it better the distal part of the femur. More distributed this wire in half pin, better stability for the fragment. Obviously, uh, patient in this situa clinical situation, patient have a just rigidity of the, of the knee because if there is infection, there is a defect, the patient don't move the knee really good. For this reason, important to, to achieve much possible movement during surgery. Okay, and now our frame is ready. Practically, we prepare everything for for doing bone transport it's we need again one road lateral here we need to put it now we don't have too much space here because of this system of fixation but I put it near in the way you understand but it's better to put it in medial side connect it with the plate Okay, and another system we should put here. Uh, theoretically, we should put force another system here. Do we have two two posts? Maybe like this, maybe male. Because I need to to keep another system here. Mm. 
No small bolt, please. Small. Another road with female, like this. Maybe you put two more. holes. Uh, one hole, one hole with female, not. Mm -hmm. Can fix it, please. Okay. Because uh, this important system, because we need to control the virus with during lintering on the proximal part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not. When you build by, by planar hinges, always do uh, this system of attachment. The first, they put the post, like two hole post, per, for example, the first step. The second step, to put this road with a female. And the third step, put the male again, to connect them between them here. Okay. Not. Okay. Uh, this system much more stable for roads. Connect them. In this way, I show you how we may control the lengthening and correct the deformity during lengthening if it's created. Because it's not only the bones, we should always think about muscles and about the tension of the muscles and the fragment displacement. Because if you put all straight, it looks nice frame, but it's not functional. What we do now, now we Remove the plate, yes, and we will be in the real life with a defect of the femur. We should tension something, not under, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. you remove this. Another two screws in this way, and defect we have. Okay. 
Okay, this is cortex screw. This is metaphysical screw. Mm -hmm. Okay. Plate. Attach it, disattach it, okay. Nice. Now that we have a defect, we should connect up later, maybe we connect with this rod, but it should be posterior one. And we proceed with the surgery into the osteotomy. Like I said you before, we should disconnect them. Now maybe we don't do it because it's the same procedure. We need only to release a little bit knot. Like I said, we, will, uh, we, we sign the length of the, this road with a marker. In the way when we finish osteotomy, we put all stuff in the original position. This is important things because after the osteotomy, there is really dangerous to have displacement. There is no displacement, better is. Okay, I do osteotomy here. If you agree with me, from medial side like this, okay? <laughs> Not so easy. <laughs> okay, I do a sotomy. It's not important, it may be transfers, it will be a little bit oblique. Important thing to do a sotomy. <laughs> yes, I use, like I said before, always a sotom. I don't do pre-drilling, I don't use uh, the drill for doing uh, holes on the bone. I prefer to do it only acute osteotomy with osteotom. Okay, like you see now, we are practically ready to do the bone transport. Like we explained before, what I do, I do shorten it here. Slowly, slowly, you may do it distally or proximally where you're more comfortable. We short here. We do progressive shortening. I may do it here. And this way defect became smaller and smaller. Here, like this. And we continued to do this. Slowly, slowly. Obviously when a you arrive in contact, we should control it if there is displacement or not. And you may do it on the operation room if you prefer to do, to do revision of the dock inside. Or you may do translational system and realign it with this system. And the proximal part, what we do? We, we do lengthening. Lengthening of these four rods simultaneously, slowly, slowly, one millimeter a day. And we achieve this lengthening like this. And this system now, like you see, it looks nice because we don't have a muscle tension. You see, the lengthening precision, procedure is easy, really straight bone, no, no displacement, no, no any movement. What in real life, what's happened? Because when we do lengthening, what's happened? That the proximal fragment goes in varus. There is always tendency to go in varus. And we, if we look to the X-ray, it will be plus minus like this. Mm. 
the femur, if you uh, see, if you see it, yeah, the proximal femur, and a little bit in varus. The more you do lengthening, more it goes in varus here. Okay, because the wires is bended, tension of the muscles too big, and the, the, we don't have a fixation like a wire fixation inside of the bone. It is a how to say it. It is only attaching from one side and another side is bended and femur goes in virus. And what we do? We do lengthening. When we finish lengthening, <coughs> what we do? We do uh, practically, we stay firmly with them uh, this road, medial road, this hinges, works. And uh, we may do or Again, doing a little bit more destruction of this road for correction, but it's better again to achieve uh, as much as possible lengthening. And when regenerated start forming, there is no shortening. What you do, you do only compression of two external road this way. And this is helps us to correct virus deformity, like this, you see? We could do compression of external road, and we do correction of virus, and we correct virus in this way. But only after you achieve the lengthening, because if, if you do it before, you go in shortening, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't have any correction. In the, the same system, this was, you may use it, for correction of procurvatum or recurvatum, because when we do lengthening, another uh, complication may create. This is a procurvatum deformity. We, I show you how it may be, practically like this. Hinges should be free. Yes, and like you see now, there is a procurvatum. No, this is. If you look at the lateral view, it looks a procurvatum deformity. And what we do for correction of this, we we uh, compress lateral road here. Then we distract the posterior road. Like this. All the corrections should be done slowly or maybe quite acutely because if the, the generated is uh, elastic, plastic like a rubber, you may achieve it quite immediately. Or if you prefer, you may do it in a few days. And this way you control the correction of procurvatum. Okay, only your hand. We continue to lengthening proximally, compression distally, and you achieve the healing of the bone. If the defect is so big, maybe you don't need to do uh, complete restoring of defect. You may leave the shortening of the leg. In the future, you may do another lengthening. But if it's possible, better to do it one time, all this treatment. Okay, thank you. We finish this workshop. Your question about this?